Hi, I'm Ben Monroe, and I'm excited to have been asked back to read you again this year. I'm going to read an excerpt from my story, Scritch Scratch, which will be coming out soon in Tales of the Lost Volume 2, a COVID-19 charity anthology. By the time you're hearing this, actually, the book might even be in print. You can take a look at my website, benmonroe.com, and click on the fiction links, and you'll be able to find a link to order the book if you're interested. Uh, this piece is from the middle of the story. Ray and his wife, Nicole, have just moved from California to the outskirts of Austin, Texas, and they've noticed some small things have been going missing from their new house. I've been hearing some weird, ratty, scratchy noises in the attic and walls as well. And as we start, they've just come home from a party. As Ray walked toward the porch, something caught his eye. Next to the side of the house, something poked out from under the orange berries of the sumac bushes planted around the perimeter. Something slim and gray. He let go of Nicola's hand and then walked toward it. What is it, she said, looking after him. Not sure, he replied as he walked toward the corner of the house. Flies buzzed around the bush as he approached it. Once he got closer, he squatted down, balancing himself with one hand. With his other, he moved the tiny branches aside and found a coyote. It was lifeless, just a limp gray shape. Its head twisted at an unnatural angle and its muzzle smeared with dark, drying blood. Dead coyote, Ray said. Should we call animal control? I think you call sanitation, Nicole replied. Let's go inside and see if we can figure it out. She slapped at something on her arm. Come on, I'm getting eaten alive. She walked under the porch and unlocked the front door. Ray stood up, keeping his eyes on the dead canine. Something was wrong with its muzzle. It was strangely misshapen, flatter than he thought it should be. Yeah, go on in, he said. I'll, I'll be right behind you. When he heard the screen door slam shut, Ray snapped a slim branch off the sumac bush. With the broken end, he prodded the coyote's mouth open. And when he levered the jaws apart, he saw what was odd about it. The coyote had no teeth. Looking closer, he saw black sockets still oozing blood where teeth should be. He heard a quick scratching overhead and looked up just in time to see something small and dark skitter around the roof and up under the eaves. He dashed around the side of the house, keeping his eyes on the roof where the thing had disappeared. Just as he came around the corner, he saw the shape squeeze into a crack where the roof and the wall met. He watched the crack for a minute to see if the thing would emerge, but nothing came out. Ray walked back around to the front of the house and up the steps to the porch. As he approached the screen door, a cloud of bugs flew from the porch light. He swatted them away as he opened the door and entered the house, making sure to keep his mouth closed. Hey, Nikki, he called out as he walked down a short hallway looking for her. It looks like there's maybe a rat or possum or something in the attic. He came into the kitchen where he saw Nicole standing by the sink, phone pressed to her ear. She mimed shushing him with one finger. You can't come out tonight, she was saying. Uh, then she nodded and said, sure, okay, tomorrow then. She took the phone from her ear and, tape, and tapped off the button with her thumb. Who is that, Ray asked. Sanitation, she said. I tried animal control, but apparently they're only for live animals. Sanitation said to leave it alone. And they'll send someone out in the morning to pick it up. Ray shrugged. Oh, I guess that's fine, he said. What was that you said about rats, she asked. Oh, I saw something crawling up the side of the house into the attic where the roof and wall meets. Ugh, she said. I started out in the morning. I'm going to bed. Sure, I'll be right up, he said. I'm just going to go make sure everything's locked up. You know, this is chainsaw animal country, you know. Pretty sure that movie was all made up, she said, and then disappeared up the stairs. A moment later, he heard the bedroom door click closed. Ray wandered through the downstairs of the house, locking every door, checking the latches on every window. Just as he was about to go upstairs himself, he remembered the fireplace in the living room and made sure the damper was fully shut. Rats, possums, hell, could even be a chupacabra for all Ray knew. For a few minutes, he stood in the middle of the living room, listening intently for any scritch or scratch, but the house was silent and still. By the time Ray rose again the next morning, he could already tell it was going to be a scorcher. Sunlight streamed through the east-facing windows of the kitchen while he scrambled eggs over the stove. He took a sip of coffee and was just putting it back on the countertop when the doorbell rang. Heck, he muttered, taking the frying pan off the stove and setting it to the side. He opened the front door and found a round man with graying hair on the porch. He carried a beat-to-hell clipboard and wore workman's coveralls. Ray noticed the sanitation department's logo on his chest and a patch reading, Charlie, just below it. Oh, hi, Ray said. You hear about the coyote? 
In the distance, he heard the buzzing croak of insects in the grass. Yes, sir, the man said in return. He looked down at his clipboard and then at the street numbers next to the door, he ticked something off on a form. Do you care to show me where the animal is, he said. Past the man in the driveway to the next to Ray's car was a pale green pickup truck with the same sanitation department logo painted on the side. Ray noticed a collection of black plastic garbage bags in the bed of the truck. Yeah, of course, Ray said, stepped out of the house. The morning heat hit him hard, causing beads of sweat to pop up on his forehead. Gonna be a hot one, he said to Charlie. If you say so, Charlie said, stepping aside as Ray walked down the porch steps. Just over here, Ray said as he walked along the side of the house. But when he approached the bush, he saw nothing under it. It was right here, he said. Charlie looked at the ground and pointed. Good drag marks, he said, and walked to the horn of the house. Ray followed as Charlie disappeared around the corner. He saw the drag marks in the dirt and a thin trail of dry blood drops. A moment later, he rounded the corner and saw Charlie standing a few feet in front of him. Charlie turned as he heard Ray approach and said, Buzzard. The back of the house was a well-tended lawn surrounded by a low fence. Bushes and flowers had been planted around the fence, lending a bit of elegance to the dirt patch surrounding it. And in the front of the flowers, a mop of glossy brown feathers crouched over the prostrate form of the dead coyote. Charlie bent down, picked up a handful of grit from the dusty ground, and tossed it at the shape. Pebbles hit it, and instantly wide wings sprouted. The grotesque bald head of a turkey vulture popped up, a strip of red oozing meat in its beak. It turned to them, opened its beak, and let out a dire, gurgling hiss. Its wings beat at the air, and the buzzard hopped a few feet away before taking flight away from them. Well now, Charlie said, stepping forward, nonplussed by the birds. The buzzard was going to drag your coyote off in the trees, eh? Charlie walked to the coyote and poked it with the toe of its boot. <clears throat> a moment later, yeah, that's a coyote for sure. Want to get a bag, he said, and walked back to his truck. Ray turned back to the body of the small dog-like animal. They'd lived in Texas only a week, and he'd seen a few of these from a distance, but never up close until this one. His eyes went back to the creature's mouth and the missing teeth. He heard a whooshing snap behind him and turned to see Charlie shaking open a large black plastic bag. He was wearing leather work gloves now, covered in dark red smears and splotches. He handed the open bag to Ray. Here, hold this, he said. Ray took the bag, holding it wide open as Charlie picked up the coyote's body already stiff with rigor and dumped it unceremoniously into the bag. Ray turned his head as a wave of foul air erupted from the bag. Charlie twisted his neck up, twisted the neck of the bag around and then tied it in a knot. Okay, that's it, he said, turning back to his truck. Do I need to sign anything? Ray asked. No, sir, said Charlie. All done and done. Well, thanks, Ray called after. He watched as Charlie tossed the bag into the back of his truck. It hit with a solid yet somehow sickeningly meeting meaty wet thud. The truck grunted off in a cloud of gut dust. Ray headed back around front. He wanted to wash his hands and get something cold to drink. As he walked past where the coyote had been under a bush the night before, a sparkle blow of the bush near where the animal's head had, it had been caught his eye. A brief silver glimmer. He squatted down and pushed the bushes aside, careful not to get any of the gore-soaked dirt on his jeans. As he leaned forward, he saw what had caught his attention, a silver dollar, half buried in the dirt. He picked it up, rubbing the dirt off with his thumb. It's weird, he said, turning the coin over between his fingers. It had a stamped profile of Eisenhower on it. The date was marked 1973. He slipped it into his pocket and walked back into the house. When he got back inside, he found Nicole sitting in the breakfast nook in a dark red terry cloth bathrobe, her hair up haphazardly. It was what he sometimes referred to as her don't talk to me until I've had my coffee look. She was sipping in a mug as he entered the kitchen. The trash guy come, she said as he entered. Yeah, I'm all done, Ray replied, interrupt, interrupted a buzzard having breakfast. Nicole looked at him over the rim of her mug. It's too early, she said. I don't want to hear about it. Well, the guy dumped the thing in the bag and took it away before the buzzard could finish it up. He he turned on the sink's faucet and then took the coin out of his pocket and washed it, his hands on, under the running water. Did you lose a silver dollar, he asked her. She looked up and said, no, why? He tossed the coin to her, found it near the coyote, thought it might have been yours. No, she said, turning it over in her hand, never seen it before. Must have been the previous owners. Ray dried his hands on a cloth towel hanging from a metal ring near the sink. Well... I guess that's an extra buck closer to owning this place, he said. 
Nicole smiled at that and went back to her coffee. I'm going to run into town, Ray said. Pick up a few rat traps and then take them up into the attic. You need anything on at the hardware store? She shook her head. No, thanks. Okay, he said. Well, back in a bit. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of the stories this month. Happy Halloween.